Physical Properties At the end of this video, you should be able to identify six examples of physical properties of matter, describe how density is used to identify substances, list six examples of physical changes, and explain what happens to matter during a physical exchange. A physical property is a characteristic of a substance that can be observed or measured without changing the matter's identity. For example, let's take a look at this apple. We see that the apple is red. It has a green leaf on it. Those are physical properties. Think of some ways that you can identify matter. By the odor, color, shape, state, solubility, magnetism, density, and there are many more. So let's take a look at density. Density is the amount of matter in a given space, or how tightly packed the particles are. Look at this sponge, for example. In the sponge, the particles are spaced very far apart. In a brick, which happens to be the same size, the particles are packed very, very closely together. So that means the brick is more dense than the sponge. Density does not just deal with solids, but it also deals with liquids and gases. So let's take a look at how this looks for a liquid. Let's take a look at this graduated cylinder. The graduated cylinder has a variety of liquids in it. Where the liquid is in the graduated cylinder depends on its density. So for example, look down here at the very bottom. This is maple syrup. Maple syrup, if you've ever used it on your pancakes, is very, very thick, is very heavy, very dense. So it sinks all the way down to the bottom of the graduated cylinder. The next thing in line here is antifreeze. Antifreeze is what you put in your windshield wiper fluid so that it doesn't freeze up if it were to sit outside in the cold. Next in line is dish soap, then shampoo, and then water, and the last thing is corn oil. So if we look at this, the corn oil is actually the least dense of all of the liquids. So how do we solve for density? Well, density has a formula, D equals M over V. This D is going to stand for density. The M is going to stand for mass. And the V stands for volume. The mass is always going to be calculated in grams, and the volume is going to be calculated in liters or milliliters. So we'll put liters or milliliters here. Okay, so this is how you're going to find what density is. Now let's take a look at each one of these things individually. Okay, so for finding density, the first thing we're going to need is the mass. So in order to find the mass, we probably need to use some sort of triple beam balance and find the mass of this object. So we're going to say the mass of this little rock that we're finding the volume for, or the density for, this rock equals 3 grams. The next thing we're going to need to find is we're going to need to find the volume. So to find the volume, we're going to use a graduated cylinder here and we're going to say 3 milliliters and here's another look at our graduated cylinder. So we're going to fill this graduated cylinder up with some water and we're going to take the measurement. So I'm going to fill it up to the 1. Um, this is 1 milliliter. Now I'm going to take that rock and I'm going to drop that rock into this graduated cylinder. 
And when I do, when I drop that rock in, all of a sudden that water level is going to go up to two. So I started with one milliliter, I drop this rock in, and now it's gone up to two milliliters. So I need to subtract my initial volume from my final volume. So I'm going to write that down. Initial volume, final volume. Okay, and that's going to give me the volume of this rock. So if my final volume was 2 milliliters, my initial volume was 1 milliliter, the volume of the rock is going to be 1 milliliter. So now we can find the density. We know the mass is 3 grams. We know that the volume of the rock is 1 milliliter. So we can just plug this into the formula now. And let me grab a red pen here. So now I can plug in 3 grams over 1 milliliter equals density. So if I divide this, I'm going to get, I'm going to have to come over here, my total density equals 3 grams per milliliter. That's the density of my rock. A physical change is a change that affects one or more of the physical properties of a substance. So for example, this log, if you were to chop up and make into sawdust, that's a physical change. It's physically changing the wood, but there's no chemical change or no other chem there's no other change in the wood other than that it's in smaller pieces. It's still the same substance. So that's a physical change.